Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to discuss the fabrication of custom tray for the edangelous patients. This is one of the important laboratory step in the complete danger fabrication. And this is also one of the most important preclinical exercise and also as does a viva for undergraduate students. And we fabricate the custom trays for complete danger fabrication in our clinics also. So let's begin. Coming to the introduction. These are the trays which is used to overcome the inaccuracies associated with the primary impressions. And they are custom made to fit the danger bearing area on the primary model. Like stock trays, they are used to support and transport the impression material to the mouth and one set to the laboratory. And the design of the custom tray will depend on the amount of undercut present and the type of impression material used. Coming to the definition, it is a custom made device. It is prepared for a particular patient and which is used to carry, confine and control an impression material while making an impression. So, this is actually a custom made device and it is made for a particular patient. Okay. And what is its purpose? It can be remembered as 3C that is carry, confine and control the impression material while making an impression. So what is the purpose of an impression tray? As we said, it can be remembered as three C's. It's, uh, to carry, to control and to confine the impression material. The custom made impression tray is made from either acrylic or VLC resins are used in final impressions for crown and ridge restorations and for denture construction. And the reasons why the custom trays are used rather than the stock trays. They are the operator can better control the material thickness. The custom trays can accommodate any anatomic anomaly such as large lingual torrent. And these custom trays are more stable than the stock trays. Okay, stock trays are less stable than the custom trays. And the custom trays can be used again for the same patient. These are the various reasons why the custom trays are used rather than the stock trays. And this is the schematic diagram which is showing an overextended primary impression that displaces the tissues beyond the anatomical disposition. So when making a primary impression using high rigid, um, high, high using material like uh, impression compound, the soft tissues in the palate and in the sulcus usually get displaced. So hence we get an overextended impression. So if we uh, have fabricated the denture using this impression, we may end up preparing one with overextended products. What are the objectives of a custom tray? To confine and control the final impression material, to obtain minute details of the denture bearing area, border seal development, ensure the uniform distribution of the final impression material, and ensure planned distribution of the pressure on residual bridges. So these are the various objectives. And let's discuss what are the ideal requirements of a custom tray. Ideally, it should be rigid. It should be dimensionally stable on the cast as well as in the mouth. And the tissue surface should be free of voids or projections. And it should be well adapted to the primary cast. It should be easy to construct and remove. And 
it should be very smooth without sharp edges these are the various ideal requirements for a custom tree what are the primary considerations when selecting an impression tray and the material in selection of an impression tray and material the various primary considerations are the amount of undercut present and whether there are any areas of the mucosa are mobile or unsupported so these are the two main criteria for selecting an impression tray and the material coming to the various types of custom trays depending on the condition of the bridge it can be classified as custom tray with release custom tray with spacer and custom tray with window these are the various types of custom trays so coming to first one that is custom tray with relief it is also termed as closed fitting tray and where there is a majority of the denture bearing area is free from large undercuts this closed fitting tray should be used and it allows pressure to be exerted on the denture bearing area while taking the impressions it is usually used with impression materials which are non elastic or rigid one set typically zinc oxide is not fixed and where these are unavailable a medium bodied silicon material may be used that is about the custom tray with relief here in this picture it shows the mid palatine suture and the incisive papilla they are relieved in the maxillary first so areas such as incisive papilla and the mid palatine suture are relieved in the maxillary cast and here this is the mandibular cast here the crest of the residual ridge is relieved in the mandibular cast so the relief areas in maxilla and the mandible so one thickness of base plate wax is applied over the areas when relief is indicated on both cast and this happens when an incisive papilla come to lie on the crest of the ridge due to resorption mid palatine suture is tented on back patient due to very thin mucosal covering and sharp spiny ridge present in the mandibular crest so close fitting tray is made over these relieved areas without the use of a spacer and this produces a selective pressure impression distributing more load to the stress bearing area here this is the relief wax which has been properly positioned over the non stress bearing area and attached to the maxillary arch this is one thickness of, of the base plate wax which is attached to the cast with melted wax approximately every 12 to 16 mm that is half an inch here the relief wax is attached to the mandibular arch over non stress bearing areas the handles for the close fitting trays are best designed to be intra oral and it supports the lip in a natural manner it avoids the distortion of the labial sulcus what is the ha handle height it should be such that it is with the level of the top of the lip and it should extend distally around the ridge to the premolar region it allows the clinician fingers to exert pressure on the base plate evenly along the entire impression tray after seating the impression so the handles for close fitting trays are best designed to be intra oral that is important okay coming to the custom tray with spacer it is actually indicated for the ideal bridges where 
uniform pressure can be given to the entire denture bearing tissues and the impression is made in an undistorted state. Where the, there are large undercut, it prohibits the use of a close fitting tray as the removal from the mouth without causing distortion would be difficult and removal from the cast model would cause fracture of the cast. And this type of custom tray can be used with alginate, elastomeric and impression plaster impression materials. Okay. What are the functions of a spacer? So the purpose of a spacer, it allows the tray to be positioned in the mouth during border molding procedure to allow the impression to have an even thickness of the impression material and it prevents distortion of material at the final stage. So these are the various functions of a space. And the custom tray should extend 2 mm short of the vestibular reflection. So this is the vestibular reflection and this is 2 mm from the vestibular sulcus. Okay. So spacer is outlined on the cast. Its extension should be 2 mm short of the custom tray. This is maxillary and this is maxillary. And the spacing between the tray and tissues should be increased according to the depth of undercut, tear strength and elastic limit of the impression material. Here, Uniform spacer of 2 mm is provided using a base plate wax and the peripheral extension of the spacer should be 2 mm short of the custom tray. So in maxilla it should not cover the posterior palatal seal area but it should stop at the anterior vibrating line. In mandible it should not cover the lutromolar pad. Here these are the square wax stops these are the these are called as stops they are created by removing the wax from spacer both anteriorly and posteriorly in this is maxilla and this is maxilla okay so we have already said the spacer which is extension it should be 2 mm short of the custom trip what are the thickness of a spacer? According to various others, there are various dimensions. So, which are the main authors who described this thickness of spacer? They are Hawker and Fenn. So, required thickness of a spacer were proposed by J. A. Hawkrick and Fenn. By Hawkrick, Zinc oxide eugenol paste 0.5 mm, alginate 3 mm, elastomeric material 0.5 to 1.5 mm, plaster 1.5 mm. And by Fen, it is zinc oxide eugenol paste, it is 0.5 mm, it is same as that of Hopkirk, but alginate it is 2 mm only. For Hopkirk, according to him, 3 mm is needed, but by Fen, alginate only 2 mm. Then elastomeric, that is 0.5 to 1.5. Here, by Fen, 1.3, 3 mm. Okay. And plaster, 1.5 by Hopkirk, and uh, by Fen, this 2.5. So these are the various thickness of space. So coming to the custom tray with window. It is actually indicated for the flabby and displaceable tissues. Here usually the anterior ridges are affected and the minimal or controlled pressure impression is indicated for the displaceable tissue while a normal impression can be made for the remainder of the arch. And this is another example for a selective pressure impression. And the affected area is marked and blocked out in the Preliminary cast and the custom tray is constructed without involving this area. And the rest of the custom tray can be prepared similar to close fitting tray or custom tray with space. 
So this is the maxillary anterior flabby ridge which is marked on the primary preliminary cast. Here this is a window in the flabby ridge area. This is the claw custom tree with window. Okay. And this is used for a flabby or displaceable ridges. So which are the materials used for construction of special tray? Cold cure acrylic resin or self cure acrylic resin or auto polymerizing acrylic resin. It's most common. Visible light cure acrylic resin. Then shellac base plate. Impression compound. And height cure acrylic resin. Very rare. And it can be remembered as Shiva. That is S for shellac base plate. H for heat cure acrylic resin. I for impression compound, V for visible light cured acrylic resin, and A for auto polymerizing acrylic resin. So, the materials used for the custom tray fabrication can be remembered as the word Shiva. Shellac, heat cured resin, impression compound, visible light cured resin, auto polymerizing acrylic resin. The fabrication of custom tray depends on which type of material we are using. Most common used materials are shellac, cold cure acrylic, vacuum foam vinyl or polystyrene, vacuum foamed thermoplastic resin and type 2 impression compound that is tray compound. So these are the various materials used for making custom tricks. So let's discuss to, uh, the main topic of this lecture that is the fabrication of custom tray. What are the steps to be followed for uh, fabrication of a custom tray? First the primary cast was prepared and the outlines were marked. And the undercuts were analyzed with the help of a surveyor and blocked out with the wax. Then relief areas in maxilla and mandible were marked and relieved with base plate wax. Approximately 1 to 1.5 mm thick and the spacer wax was adapted, adapted throughout the extent of the special tray. That is 2 mm short coinciding with the second line except posterior palatal seal area in the maxilla and buccal shelf area in the mandible. And wax in the canine and molar area was removed for Shoot stop. These are the outlines for uh, maxillary and mandibular custom tray showing the vestibular extension, tray extension, and spacer with stops. Okay. Here, this is the desired 2 mm of space which exists between the custom tray and depth of vestibule on this maxillary arch. And this is the maxillary tray which has been trimmed and finished. And its posterior extension ends at the vibrating line. This is the vibrating line and the posterior extension which ends at the vibrating line. Here the handle projects from the tray at approximately the angulation of the natural central excisor. And this is the mandibular tray that is trimmed mandibular tray. Here this is the 2 mm space which has been created between the depth of the vestibule and the flange of the tray. And the same, uh, the same spacing should exist intraorally if the pre preliminary impression and diagnostic cast were not over or under extended. Here in the maxilla, the distal termination should be a line joining the hamular notches passing 2 mm posterior to the fovea palatine. In the mandible, it should be just beyond the retromolar pad. This is the retromolar pad and this is just beyond the retromolar pad. So, in both the arches, the outline in the frenum area should be slightly elevated or notched by 1 mm to provide the adequate space for this landmark. Coming to the various uh, materials used for the custom tray fabrication. First one is shellac special tray. This is the picture showing the trimming of the shellac special tray. 
and it was the most commonly used material for making such plates and this material is basically a type of wax and is commercially available in various shapes and uh, shapes for the maxilla as well as the mantle coming to the composition of shellac resin 90.9 percentage then wax it is 4 percentage gluten 2.8 percentage moisture 1.8 percentage and coloring agent 0.5 percentage and let's discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of the shellac material advantages are it is inexpensive it can be easily manipulated it can be readapted even if it distorts but what are the disadvantages of the shell why it is not used recently because it was it is very brittle and it hence it breaks easily and also it tends to distort easily sometimes wires may be required to strengthen it and it is very heat sensitive it loses its flow properties if overheated that is about the shellac and briefly on the adapting of the special tray this is the picture showing the adaptation uh, adapting the special tray to fit into the circus using a blunt directed instrument see an instrument which is used to adapt the shellac into the cast here this is the finishing the edges with the bp blade and here the file we used to trim the edges and this is the completed special tray and here this is the actually a shellac blade which is rolled into a cylinder what is its purpose actually it is for a handle construction okay so for handle we are uh, rolling a shellac plate into a cylinder shape okay heating one end of the shellac roll it till it just starts to sag this is the adapting of the rolled shellac handle onto the face plate so overheating the special tray will produce smoke bubbles blackening and leaching of the shellac and wax and it also lead to melting and flowing of the shellac into the pores of the cast and these shellac trays should be fabricated 6 hours prior to the impression procedure here this is the fusing the edges of shellac handle to the shellac base coming to the next type of material and it is most commonly used recently okay that is cold cure acrylic tray it's also known as auto polymerizing resin and this material is similar to the denture based resin used for the final fabrication of the denture but the material is set by chemical reaction and hence it is irreversible what is its composition it is a, it can be supplied as powder and liquid and in powder polyethylene methacrylate act as a polymer benzoyl peroxide it is initiator compounds of mercuric sulfide cadmium sulfide they are used as dyes zinc or titanium oxide opacifiers dibutyl phthalate plasticizer and dyed organic filler and inorganic particles like fibers etc are added for aesthetics in liquid monomethyl methacrylate it is polymerizer N and dimethyl para toldin is activator. Dibutyl phthalate it is plasticizer. Glycol dimethacrylate one to two percentage it acts as cross linking agent. Hydroquinone point zero zero six percentage it acts as inhibitor. It increases the shelf life of a monomer. It's very very important. That its composition is very important for exams, writing exams, and also for the practical viva. so coming to what are the advantages and disadvantages of this cold cure material advantages are it is very strong it adapts well to the cast but it can be trimmed to adequate thickness it has good thermal properties and it is easy to fabricate 
and that it has good stability and it can workable at mouth temperature and it is biocompatible. And what are the disadvantages? It cannot be readapted after warpage. It is very very important disadvantage. Okay, it cannot be readapted after warpage. Trimming and finishing is very time consuming and in presence of undercuts, the material may get locked into them and may tend to break the cast. These are the various advantages and disadvantages of chemically activated or self care resins that is advantages, convenience and simplicity, no equipment is needed, asset free, long term storage stability, manipulation of working or setting time by varying proportions, degree of cure equal throughout material if mixed properly, marginal stress buildup during curing is much lower than for photo cured resins owing to relatively slower rates for cross link formation and the disadvantages are mixing causes air entrapment which is leading to porosity and it weakens the material and increases staining aromatic amine accelerators oxidize and turn yellow with time that is color instability is important disadvantage difficult to mix evenly causing unequal degree of cure and consequent poor mechanical properties. So coming to the fabrication. That is first the relief areas and borders of the special trays are marked. And the wax spacer is adapted on the relief areas. Then separating medium is coated on the entire cast and all the space. Two major techniques are used for custom tray fabrication. Sprinkle on method and down method. And these should be fabricated 24 hours before the impression procedure to ensure adequate degree of polymerization. What about the shellac trays? Six hours prior to impression procedure. So, here, self cure resin material trays should be fabricated 24 hours, that is, one day before the impression procedure. So, two techniques are there sprinkle on technique and dowel technique. We'll discuss in detail. What about the sprinkle on method or sprinkle on technique? Here, the powder and liquid are uh, loaded in separate dispensers. Small quantity of powder is sprinkled on the particular area over the cast and the liquid is sprinkled over the powder. So, here this is the powder is dispensed and consecutively wet with the drops of liquid. Okay. Sprinkling drops of the liquid which polymerizes the powder and this continues the uh, till the end your ridge and associated landmarks are covered and this advantage uh, and its advantage is that easy of use and minimum wastage of the material. that is about the spring on check okay here powder is dispersed and consecutively wet with the drops of liquid So the method, cast is tilted approximately 45 degree, polymer is shifted on one side of the cast and monomer is syringed on it. Powder and liquid are alternately added until there is a uniform layer of resin approximately 2 mm thick. And this is continued until the rest of the denture bearing area is covered with the resin. And this is the completed self cure. So, as we said, that main advantage is that it is of use and minimal wastage of it. And it, the disadvantages are even thickness cannot be obtained. And too many porosities may form within the material. So, that is the greater chances of porosity which is due to the inadequate saturation of the polymer. 
and it is time consuming okay so that is all about the sprinkle on technique or sprinkle on method now second method that is dow method or dow technique it is very very important technique and it is most commonly used technique because it is less time consuming okay so here the powder liquid mixing ratio is 3 is to 1 if the ratio is not maintained or insufficient monomer is used then excessive shrinkage or porosity or granularity is may occur so after mixing the monomer and polymer the uh, it undergoes the uh, six different stages and that stage is a very very important for the exam point of view and also for practicals so first stage is known as wet sand stage here the polymer is soaked in mono second one is early stringy stage in this stage if the material is touched fine filaments are seen which is sticking to the finger next one is most important stage that is late stringy stage where long strings are present and during the end of the late stringy stage the manipulation should be stopped so it is very very important stage that is late stringy stage here the manipulation stopped next one is the dough stage in this stage the material is very workable the next one is the rubbery stage next that is the material it cannot be manipulated anymore because the material is rubbery trying to manipulate the material in this stage will result in excessive warpage of the tray and the next stage is the stiff stage here the material loses its elasticity and becomes more plastic after the stiff stage the polymerization is almost complete so these are the various stages okay coming to the procedure manipulation is done in the late stringy or and a dough stage and the material is kneaded in the hand to achieve a homogeneous mix and then the material is shaped into 2 mm thick sheet and the flattening of the dough can be by it should be rolled over a glass slab using a plastic roll okay or between the it is uh, it can be flattened by pressing it between two glass slabs okay so separate media should be applied over the roller or glass slabs to avoid the stickness so this is the flattened dough which is adapted on the cast with mild finger pressure under the material surface here the rolled sheet of acrylic is adapted over the cast from center to the periphery and it prevents the formation of ring grease and care should be taken not to apply excessive pressure on this ridge area because it might lead to thinning of the tray and the excess material should be cut out with a bp blade before the material sets after cutting the excess the material should be held in position as shrinkage and warpage may occur during polymerization here the excess acrylic should be trimmed using a bp blade okay this is the excess acrylic should be trimmed using a bp blade before the material sets that is very important if the material sets then we cannot able to trim the excess using bp blade so after cutting out the excess the material should be held in position as shrinkage and warpage may occur during polymerization okay coming to the advantages as we said it takes less time and the chances of porosity are less but the disadvantages are less working time hence perfect adaptation in all the areas will be difficult and it is technique sensitive and there is more wastage of material that is very very important disadvantage this wastage of material is more and adaptation is uh, is not so perfect in all the areas okay so coming to the handle fabrication so that is about the tray fabrication 
Now, for the tray, handle should be there. Okay. So, what is the material for a fabrication of the hand tree? Actually, it is uh, using a excess dough material. Okay. So, excess dough material is used for the fabrication of hand. There are two school of thoughts. That is, first by Dresden. He suggested the placement of a single handle in the anterior picture. Like this. Okay. Here, this is the single handle in the anterior picture. But Mercury, he suggested that the placement of three handles. That is one anteriorly and two posterior. Okay. Mercury suggested that there should be three handles. One on the anterior region. And two on either side of the molar region. And these two are called auxiliary handles and is used for the stabilization and orientation of the tray. And tagged is the finger rest. So there should be for a mandibular tray, there should be three handles: one in the anterior region and two in the posterior region. And handle should be parallel to the long axis of the teeth that are to be placed. And handle should not arise horizontally from the tray because it may interfere with the lip molds. And it should be 3 to 4 mm thick, 8 mm long and 8 mm high. And the grooves should be made on the side where the handle to be placed. And the Few drops should be sprayed on the grooves and the handle in order to enhance the chemical bond. Then the handle is compressed against the grooves for bonding and deficiencies at the junction filled by sprinkle on technique. Clear? And coming to the vacuum formed vinyl or polystyrene. This is the fastest method for making special tray. But the thing is that it is very expensive that is main disadvantage of this type of material here a vacuum forming machine is required for the procedure this is the vacuum forming machine there is the vinyl sheets are there okay it is placed on the electric heater coil and heated till it sacks in the absence of this vinyl sheet can be heated under the direct flame and this cast is placed below the vinyl sheet at the center of the vacuum forming chamber. And the chamber is closed and vacuum is created and the vinyl sheet is made to fall on the cast. And due, due to this vacuum, there will be no air entrapment. And thus the sheet adapts closely to the cast. And the material which is allowed to cool and the excess is trimmed using a bell. And non-asbestos casting liners are used as spacers for this material because wax spacer will melt in the vacuum chamber. So non-asbestos casting liners are used as the spacer material. Okay. This is very important. This is the vacuum forming machine. Okay. In the absence of the vacuum former, the polystyrene sheet can be heated using a metal loop under direct flame. And this is the finished polystyrene special base. And coming to the thermoplastic resins. These are very good special dry materials. And their composition varies little from that of the conventional acrylic. They are adapted using a vacuum form. And the procedure is similar to that of the polystyrene. So here also the vacuum forming machine is used. Coming to the light polymerizing resins. Here urethane dimethylate is used. And they are available in sheet and gel forms. And sheet forms are used for the tray fabrication. Sheet is adapted to the primary cast following the prevision of relief or spacer or block out. And after the application of separating medium. And the cast with the adapted sheet is then placed in a light curing chamber for 2 minutes 
following which the tray is removed, inverted and cured again for 6 minutes. It is then trimmed, finished and handles are placed using the same material to the same dimensions as described previously. And the popular light cure materials include Individual LUX, Triad, Fast Ray LC. And which are the advantages and disadvantages of the light curing materials? Advantages are it is easy to fabricate, dimensionally stable, which can be used immediately. And disadvantage is that it is brittle, produces fine particles during grinding, and needs special curing chamber. And coming to the last material which is used for the custom tray fabrication that is type 2 impression compound or tray compound. It is a type of impression compound with more filler content. And it is more rigid and dimensionally stable. And it does not have the flow properties of impression compound hence it cannot record the fine details. A preliminary impression is made using this material. After making the preliminary impression, the borders are trimmed so that it can be used as a special trim. And rod wire is attached to act like a handle for carrying the impression. And the primary impression itself used as the special trim. And wash impression is made on the type 2 impression compound. Primary and secondary impressions can be made on the same day, reducing the laboratory workload and number of visits for the patient. This is the main advantage of tray compound and impression compound. And that's all about the fabrication of special tray or custom trays for completely dangerous patients. And for storing such trays, it should be stored in the cast till the next appointment. Acrylic special trays should be stored in water to avoid warpage and shellac trays should be stored in a cool dry place. And that's all for today's lecture. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the final impressions. And subscribe for more videos. Thank you.